The trash truck is here and I am waiting for it. Hurry up, trash truck. You're driving me crazy. Hey, hey, how's everyone doing today? It's the one and only Ash Coyote back with another video. Wait, is there another Ash Coyote? Oh my God. Today, we're gonna be talking about the hot topic of the day, which is the commercialization of the fandom. Yes, you heard me correctly. Commercialization of the fandom. Companies are now sponsoring furry cons. Kind of wild, huh? But that's not always a good thing. So let's take a minute and explore what all this means for our community by taking a look at groups who've gone through similar things. Look at comic conventions or hell, even look at Pride. Everything is being commercialized now, but furry is one that I imagine would take quite a bit longer to get to that point. We aren't really a part of any major piece of media like sci-fi or anime cons. Heck, we aren't even sure what we are as a whole. So why would a company want to come to us and say, you know who I think we should advertise to? Furries. And yet we've seen it happen even before all this. Furries were consulted on films like Zootopia. Media outlets go to furries whenever there's a weird rendition of an infamous character being presented in film. <coughs> Sonic. <coughs> Why? Because we're in the know. We are the connoisseurs of anthropomorphic arts. If a furry likes it, then it must be good. So where do we draw the line in the sand for our community? How do we protect what makes us unique? Let's take a look at what happened to Pride. Over the past few years, we've seen a plethora of companies trying to cash in on Pride with rainbow everything. I even saw Pride mouthwash. You know, for those situations where you need to rinse out that stinky breath and celebrate your identity at the same time, just don't swallow because that might make you gay. I feel like there's a dozen bad jokes in there somewhere, anyone? But seriously, products like these are trying to cash in on communities like ours for one reason, money. When I worked in advertising, we saw a huge shift happen around 2014. Everything just started to become very, very targeted. Instead of a mass appeal to a highly generalized audience, we were making commercials to target demographics that weren't traditionally considered profitable, which is why we are seeing this happen more and more today. Using Pride as an example, we have seen a little bit of a loss of identity of the movement. But that's not entirely because of commercialization, though I do think it plays a very big role. Anytime we see companies swoop in like vultures trying to tap a new market, Market, you see them trying to clean up a community so that it seems more conventional in their eyes. And that often takes away a part of our soul as that community. We also see more of mainstream society infiltrating that community because of the degree of awareness brought to them through the advertising and products that are presented. Now, let's take a look at the fandom a little bit. We haven't always been a community that was traditionally considered to be acceptable. In fact, up until about four odd years ago, the community was still largely considered to be taboo. A lot of that could be chalked up to media and advertising as well. Around 2000, there was a ton of bad press. Literally everyone was trying to cash in and trash talk the fandom. Fast forward to now and suddenly we are more acceptable? I think not. Honestly, the only thing that has really changed is that we now have the numbers to be considered profitable to them. Well, and we're a more diverse community. I mean, let's be honest, in the 90s, the fandom was mostly gay white guys, and now we have a healthy mix of everyone. It's hard to know where this could lead for the furry community. Commercialization has the potential to whitewash the fandom. We have long been a safe space for the queer and artistic communities. I don't want that to ever change. In addition, we need to understand that large corporations can harm the independent artists and creators within our community. Just look at what happened with Walmart and small businesses in the 90s. Right now? The hot topic of the day is in reference to Converse, a shoe company. It might not have as direct of an impact as other companies could, but it's important to start that conversation now before it's too late. So now let's talk a little bit about the controversy at the center of all this. Converse is sponsoring a fur con in Brazil and running an ad campaign with furries in it. Before I dive too much into this topic, we should try and understand something that could be really hard for a lot of folks to understand. Brazil's a different place in the US. Who would've thought? So I decided to talk about this in depth with my friend Crash. As one of the Brazilian furries directly involved with the ad campaign, I thought he should get a chance to share his experiences. He was one of the fursuiters photographed by Converse and has been subjected to some harassment because of it. I think his story might surprise you. Olá, eu sou o Crashy. That means, hi, I'm Crash. Crash Azaro. I'm from Brazil, which is a country in South America, in case you don't know. We don't speak Spanish. Don't speak Spanish, we speak Portuguese. This is very important. And a lot of people get that wrong. Brazil is, of course, a different place from other countries. We are known for being very friendly and very heartwarming. And in the sense of the furry fandom, the perception here of what the furry fandom is is also very different. In Brazil, we have not had any sort of exposure of the fandom in any big social media 
uh, in any big media like television or newspapers that show the fandom for anything other than fursuiters and people having fun. So I would say that the uh, idea of the general public of what the fandom is in Brazil, so far, it's rather family friendly. For the general public, your regular average guy, the ones who know what furry is, they kind of see us as just people with costumes and people having fun at conventions. The culture in Brazil also has been a little more welcoming to the furry fandom, I'd say, than maybe out there, because uh, even though Brazil isn't exactly the most uh, socially developed country in the world, we have the carnivals, and I would say Brazil Brazilians are a little more welcoming to the unknown and the weird, you, especially in my city. Every time I first did it outside in my city, even the people who didn't know it, they freaked out over it, they loved it. Because it's it's the costume, the funny, the funny eyes, the talking, the dancing, the partying, they love it. I've been part of an advertisement campaign uh, by Converse, in which I was one of the 12 or so fursuiters that were called by the furry convention that got reached out by Converse to take pictures. After the photo shootings, the day after, I was alright. It was just a normal job, I just got there, had pictures taken of me and left. I came back to my cities shortly afterwards and that was it. No big deal. Ever since the advertisement came out, a lot of misconceptions about me and my involvement in it happened. And I want to talk about some of those now. I made a statement about it on my Twitter and, well, a lot of people didn't read it, it seems, because, you know, people rather jump the gun or uh, make a judgment before actually looking things up. First misconception. The advertisement is not about furries. It's about subcultures. Uh, Converse picked like 12 or plus different subcultures and they highlighted all of them in different ways and furries were just one of the many. Second misconception is that the idea came from the USA, the International Converse. It did not. Converse told the International Converse, from what I hear, told all the other Converse branches in the world to say pick a subculture. Well, the ones in Brazil picked furries. They got into some sort of deal with Brazil for Fast and for Bolichi, which is the, the, the conventions that uh, they reached out to, and then they called some fursuiters, me among them. That's it. Uh, the, the, the conventions, the, fur, the furries called other furries, called me, to take pictures. And that's it. We just took pictures. Another misconception was my involvement in it. There were some people making a lot of mis claims and spreading lies and fake news about what was my involvement in it. Yes, I've been a model before when I was younger, but it has nothing to do with what I've just done now. Uh, I didn't make it happen. I don't know anyone in Converse. I didn't ask them for that. I just received a call from the guys from uh, Brazil for Fast saying, Hey Crash, do you want to uh, be in a commercial and take some pictures of some other fursuits? They will pay. And I'm like, well, sure. Uh, just some pictures? Yeah, well, okay. And I did. That's all that I've done. Just got there and took some pictures. I didn't organize the thing. I, my involvement was as big as the involvement in any of the other first tutors that had pictures taken off that day. I am not exactly the guy behind it or anything. I didn't make it happen, all right? What I think about the advertisement, though, is that, well, in the end of the day, it is an advertisement that shows part of what the fandom is about, which is furries being fursuiters and having fun in a relaxed, regular manner. It gives exposure, and a lot of people got mad over it because of the exposure it gives of the fandom. And I feel like not wanting to expose the fandom and wanting us to be this little group that nobody knows about I think it's a little silly, because that doesn't exist anymore, I'm sorry. The fandom is already very, very known. Have you been to Anthrocon? Entire Pittsburgh knows what a furry is. If you have gone to a big convention, every single big convention makes it to the newspapers and television. We're getting more and more uh, exposure all the time. And the thing is, sad exposure happens both for better and for worse in the sense that sometimes it exposes us in a good light, sometimes exposes in a bad light. If we're getting exposure all the time, well, why is it wrong to expose the fandom as first suitors having fun? That's also part of the fandom, right? 
we can ever have a proper uh, display of what the fandom is about as a whole because we have too many faces. I would very much like to have the people uh, uh, when you tell your boss or your family that you're a furry instead of them being like, oh my god, are you into that kind of shit? They will go up to you and say, oh, um, what kind of furry are you? That's better, right? They understand that being a furry doesn't mean anything more than you're part of a very diverse group who enjoys anthropomorphic stuff. Part of what people have been worrying about the, uh, the advertisement is that if furry becomes too mainstream uh, and companies start to get into the fandom, they will try to kill our individuality. They will try to whitewash us in the sense of, okay, now you guys can't do weird stuff, you can't have fetishes, you can't be LGBTQ+, you can't have queer-friendly nature, you guys gotta become uh, white and, and heterosexual and socially acceptable. I understand this, this fear. I, I myself am bisexual, so I am not exactly uh, the mainstream socially acceptable type of, of uh, sexuality. My significant other is uh, trans, uh, agender. So, yeah, I kinda uh, understand how how scary can be the idea of more people getting in there and hope maybe trying to, to destroy our safe haven that the fandom is, where we can be all of that and still be accepted. Individuality is something that is within us, not outside. If someone's coming in, we don't get to change for them, they have to change for us. They gotta accept us. And so I think that individuality, the idea that uh, something else trying to tell us to change, has a very simple answer, which is just no. When I did the advertisement, nobody ever asked me to delete all the porn that I have on my character. It's still there. I never hid it from anyone. You can find it, they could find it, if they don't know about it already. I really have nothing to hide, because that's who I am, and I'm proud of it. When I was around 15, 16 years old, my parents found out about me being a furry, and they did the worst thing someone can do when they find out you're a furry, which is looking it up. <laughs> and, well, the stigma was very strong, it still is, and it was even stronger back then. They also found out I was bisexual through that, which didn't help. So they kicked me out of home, and then they sent me to Argentina. I was there for three months and came back afterwards, so it didn't last a lot, but it was a tough while being uh, not able to be with your family because of who you are. Individuality, you sometimes pay a very, very steep price. I wouldn't be more motivated to change for Converse or any other brand than I'd be motivated to change for my parents, and I didn't change for them. Here I am, being a fursuit, and it's still being gay, and they hate it. But I'm here, it's my individuality, <laughs> and I'll keep doing it. You should as well. Advertisements like this to the local furry community, in Brazil it was very, very well accepted. The controversial, the controversy definitely happened way more in the USA, from furries from the USA and maybe Europe. Um, and actually furries in Brazil were kind of like, wait, what? People didn't like it? Well, it was, it's kind of a matter of perspective. Within the furry community in Brazil, which is a growing fur, uh, furry fandom and much smaller than the ones in the US, the exposure to what they perceived is that it was a positive thing because we're getting more people to know about the fandom and know that we are here and know about the conventions we have here and getting people to join and get together a little more, which is very hard in a country as big as Brazil, which is as big as the US, but we have like one thirty of the amount of furries you guys have. We have very, very little furries. My city, in comparison to how much you guys have, of course, we have a lot of furries in Brazil, just comparatively amount of people versus amount of furries, it's a lot of difference. So. People saw it in a good light in Brazil. The advertisement on its own, while I understand the controversy, I understand the points people raised against it, I understand the fear. I want to get it very clear that I understand the, what people are worrying about, the corporations, the whitewashing and all that that could happen, blah, 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 blah. I understand, it's easy to get afraid of. There's a little bit of a, a overreaction in the sense that Guys, uh, companies already know about the fandom, we're already very mainstream and we won't get whitewashed as long as we don't let them. We shouldn't let them, we won't. In Brazil, we have nowadays 
three cons. Ah, gosh. I have three cons, basically. Plus one that is not really a con, it's more like a big firm meat. We have Brazil for Fast, which is the bigger one. It's the one that recently raised controversy for signing the sponsorship. And Brazil for Fast is a con of about, I would say, 300 to 400 people big. For our standards, this is as big as we've ever had, which is a lot for us. I know it's not for you guys, but it is for us. 400 people. Um, we have Fur Camp, which is about 70 people. And we have Fur Studio, which is also about 50 people. And we have Fur Balishi, which is the other con that is also by Brazil Fur Fest. And we have about, about 200 people there on the big meeting at the Bali. So the cons here are very small, and I am friends with people from pretty much all the staff of all these cons, and I see how much they struggle. It's a lot, it's, it's really hard. If you've been friends with people from staff, ask them how hard and how risky it is to, to uh, start off a con from scratch. It's tough. The bigger cons, they have the trust from the hotels because they, the hotels already know they will bring in a lot of people. They already have money that they can save from one con to another to pay any unexpected drops in attendance or any sort of unexpected uh, issue or lawsuit that breaks out. But the smaller cons, they don't have any of that. So pretty much any risk they're taking, it's on their own pockets. Something happened to a con in Brazil some time ago called Abando, which I'm very good friends with the staff to this day. It was my first con when I was 18. I hold it very dearly, even though it, there is no more. Abando, all the staff from Abando went sort of bankrupt because all of them had to pay thousands of dollars because they set up a, hotel, a deal with a hotel for 150 people and only 70 showed up. And for every room that they rented and they reserved, they had to pay with their own money. And everybody from the staff had to struggle with finances for a very good while because of that. That's how hard it is to, to have a con from the scratch and have it grow. Ask, ask to anybody who had to start a very small con 10 years ago in the US, they would tell you. I didn't know about uh, Brazil for France signing a sponsorship with uh, Converse. I didn't know about it, like I said, I just modeled for some pictures. I didn't know what were their deals between them. Before judging something, uh, a convention for getting help somewhere else, I think we should try to look in a different way. Instead of maybe us trying to attack a convention because they got a sponsorship, well, let's try to find out why they needed the sponsorship. Maybe they needed money. And if they needed money, why didn't us furries could help them to make the community grow? I think that the best way to try to keep corporations out, if that's what we're gonna go for, it's supporting the fandom better and within so that people don't have to. Because honestly, instead of attacking and lashing out on one another, try to help each other. It's a lot better that way. I think it's what we should always all be doing. Mwah. Bye bye guys. Hope you guys have a very good day. See ya. To wrap this episode up, I would like to say this. There are many different perspectives when it comes to this particular piece of furry drama. Be reasonable, ask questions, seek out the truth, and learn from each other's mistakes. Regardless of your point of view, try to be respectful to others so that we can have productive discussions as a community, rather than subjecting people to frivolous arguments. If fellow furs don't like the idea of corporate sponsorship, I would consider donating to help conventions that might not have the same resources as cons here in the US. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Please go check out Crash's channel and give him a follow. He makes some super fabulous content. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon. One dollar a month is worth more than watching all the ads on my channel. Don't forget to hit that like and notification button if you enjoyed the video. And subscribe if you aren't already. As always, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And please be kind. I hope you all have a fabulous day. Goodbye.